Hey there, I'm going to talk to you about how to use Autocrat, which is an awesome um, Google Sheets extension. So um, this is kind of like my one, two, three, four of how to use Autocrat. Um, numbers one, two, and three are loose on what order you can do them in, but you need to do all three of them before you launch Autocrat for the first time. So um, what I usually do is create the form first and this when you're creating the form, make sure that you don't have any duplicate column heading names. So um, some places where I run into this are like if you're doing eighth grade students as one question, seventh grade students as another question, sometimes I'll just name it student name and I'll have student name in a few different places and you can't do that and run AutoCAD because it will um, give you an error when it finds duplicate merge tags, which we'll explain a little bit later. So just kind of be conscious of that when you're creating your form. Um, and then create the spreadsheet for responses. So you'll just go into your form and click under the response tab and always create a spreadsheet. Um, and then add any calculated columns that you have. For the one I'm showing you today, I only have one calculated column. However, there are many times when I have a lot of calculated columns. So just kind of make sure that you have your sheet all set up with any available merge tags that you might want to feed into your template uh, when you're finished. Um, so just kind of get your spreadsheet all nice and neat and ready to go. And then the third thing I do is create the template in Google Docs or Google Slides. And I use both. I don't have a preference. It just depends on what you're needing it for. Um, if it's something that's kind of more linear and very information based, I usually go with Google Docs. If it's like um, the one I'm going to show you today is Google Docs. The bus garage um, doesn't want any fluff with theirs. They just want the information, you know, but then I have a couple others that might be really cute certificates that I'm filling out with AutoCRAT or I have um, an LMS parent guide that I want to look really kind of nice and neat to send home to parents. So for those, I'll use Google Slides just because it's a little easier to add a little more graphic detail in it than Google Docs is. So either one are fine and they work exactly the same way. So you don't need to know one or know the other. You can know both. And again, I just want to reiterate one, two, and three, you can do in any order, just have them all ready by the time that you launch AutoCRAT. So sometimes I'll know what my template is going to look like ahead of time, and that's fine. And then you just fill it in with your form data. So just to kind of give you a little background on what we're doing today, our district, um, we have a bus field trip request system where a teacher or a coach will request a school a field trip bus and their direct supervisor will either approve it or not and that goes through our system and then um, once it's approved by the supervisor an autocrat sends an email with an attachment to our bus garage people so they know all of the information they need to schedule a bus for that person so that's kind of what we're um, using today so here is my template that I'm going to use. And again, this one's very straightforward. There's, you know, nothing fancy about it. They just want the information. So at the top is the requester information, what school or organization. So maybe one of the elementary schools, or it could be the basketball team. Um, and if it's a specific sports team and then who the request is made by, I left these blank on purpose because I want to show you how to add merge tags to them, but the rest of them I already have filled in. So I won't take up your time. Um, doing those. So departure date and destination. So if you will notice, all of these are in the little um, Chevron merge tag. They're all encased in those. That's what AutoCRAT reads. So it knows what information to place into it. So you're doing basically, if you've ever used like a mail merge before, that's what it's doing. It's merging your data from that response spreadsheet into this document. Okay, so for my steps, my form is made. You don't need to see my form. It's just like all the other forms. Um, my sheet is made. It's ready to go. So this is all, this is my sheet housing all of my responses in it. Um, and it is ready to go. And then I have my template 
ready to go. And I don't have all my merge tags in there, but that's okay. Um, as long as we have them in there, by the time we actually run the autocrat, we'll be all right. So, and I also want to demonstrate how to add those. So now we're ready to run autocrat. So as a reminder, it is a sheets add-on. So we're going to go to our sheet and go to extensions. And if you haven't ever used AutoCrat before, you'll need to go to the Chrome store and, and install it. But um, here we go. So you're going to go to AutoCrat and click launch. Hopefully it'll pull up pretty soon for us. All right. And... Um, I'm going to go ahead and click edit. I did not know I already had one. I think it when I made a copy, it saved it from the other. So I'm going to click edit job and we'll just walk through the steps together. So here you just give it a name. I honestly, I, I don't know what that means. So just any like appropriate name that you want and click next. Um, here is where um, you want to add your template. So I already have bus request approval template added. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and um, add a different one because I have made a copy of one just so I can show you. And the fastest way I have found is just to search for it. So I named it Autocrat. And I'm just going to hit search. Okay, Autocrat template. Okay, and then I'm going to click on my template. So you would find your template in the list here and just select it and then um, I double clicked on it it's gonna okay so it switched over to my new template um, if you if you've used it recently you can pull it from here mine typically are not there however these are all the templates I've used before and I'm just gonna click next Okay, and here's where it's going to merge your um, your merge tags into it. So it's already finding merge tags from the um, from the template that we made. So departure date is on here, departure time. So if you notice departure date, departure time, it's listing them in order. But these three are not there, right? And we need to add those in there. So let's look back over here. And um, from your Google Sheet, you need to make sure and choose the right tab. So form responses one is usually the one that I always use. So, um, but if, if there are more, you can click the download and you can see all your other tabs in that sheet. And just make sure you tell it if it has a header row, which they almost they they will, and then that your first data row is row two. So if for some reason you have something beyond the header and your data doesn't actually start until row three or four or five or whatever, you need to just make sure and tell AutoCrat that because otherwise it's going to probably throw back some errors um, because of those rows in the middle. All right, so we are missing those merge tags at the top. So what's pretty cool about AutoCrat is you see this blue bar on the left. If you'll click it, all of the available merge tags are here and that you can just click on them to copy and paste. So if you notice here, it says click to copy to the clipboard. So we need the school or organization. So here is school or organization. So I'm just going to click it and it copied it. And I'm going to go back to my template and click here and click paste. So this is actually what I recommend for you to do to fill in your template. Mine was already pre-filled, like I said, below because I didn't want to take up your time filling all of it. But this is how you'll want to do it because it's just so easy. And if you have even a single spelling error or a space error, it's not going to find it. It has to be an exact match in order for it to match up and um, merge for you. So I need specific sports team. So I'm going to click the blue. And um, here is what I have for it. It's a longer question in my, um, in my form but I don't really need the bus garage to see that long question. They just want to know if it's a specific sports team. So while the merge tag does look really long, that's not going to show up for the final result. All right. And we have one more request made by, so I'm going to go back to here, click our blue bar 
and request made by. And here is the first name, so I'm going to click that and then go here and then I'm going to paste it. And then just like it's going to read exactly. So I've got first name here. My next merge tag is going to be last name, but I have to manually put in the space bar. So I'm actually going to hit the space bar and then I'm going to go back and get last name. And then paste it there. OK, so that when the bus garage gets it, it won't be all together. So if there are spaces in your um, between your merge tags, make sure that you manually put those in there or it's just going to smash everything together. And then I've already got in all the other merge tags below. OK. And if you have any errors, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and click save. And then I'm going to, if you see here, I'm glad it did that. I have an error. You have unmapped tags. So that should be the three that I just added in there. So I'm going to click on that and pull it up. And yes, it's the unmatched tags, because if you remember, um, those aren't matching up exactly. So here is my unmatched tab. Um, I'm going to click at the sports team there and match it up. And I believe that should be the only one. I'm glad I did that. So if you do get a little merge tag error, it's usually super easy to find. And it usually comes when, you know, you're, um, you've changed like the name of the column to make it a little more readable for someone that's not used to the form. And then I'm going to hit next. And here is really neat. You can actually create a file name for the result. So I'm going to end up in the end sending the bus garage a Google Doc, right? So the title of each of those Google Docs that I send to them each time, every single time, is going to be the departure date. So like um, March 14th trip for, you know, boys basketball is what this is going to say. So that when they receive that, even the title of the document is specific to that request. I do this because I, I send them, I don't know how many, I don't send them, but Autocrat sends them many a day. So I don't want them all to be just named bus request because if she ever has to search for a specific one, you know, 500 bus requests are going to come up every two or three weeks, it feels like. So I try to be as specific as possible. So again, if you notice, this blue bar is back here for you to use. So if you click the blue bar, any of these merge tags that are here, remember, these are just copy and then paste, can be used over here in this file name. So you can be very specific and very personalized. And I love that about it. Um, then you can um, choose what it the result is a Google Doc or a PDF, and I use both of these. I use a Google Doc because she also said that sometimes she wants to edit them before, you know, her bus driver see it. So I give her editing access to all the ones that she gets. So I give hers in a Google Doc. However, for the, like the things I might send home to parents or something that's going to be printed, I would do as a PDF. Um, so just love that you have those two options. This is also really important. This output has multiple output mo mode or single output mode. So, and I'll be honest, this confuses me every time. And every time I do Autocrat create a new one, I have to look these up, right, to be sure. So I'm just going to show you um, really quickly the output modes. You have single output mode which means that um, it merges all the rows that meet the criteria into one single document, mostly used for printing, like certificates or something that, that you might send home to the parents of the school. So single output mode is going to create one single document with many pages in it. So if you have 20 rows of form submissions. Your output when you run Autocrat is going to be one Google Doc 
with 20 pages and it's going to personalize each page. OK, for the one that I'm using today, I don't want that kind because I don't want her to get a one document with 20 bus requests on it. I want her to get multiple output modes. So what that will do is that each row that meets the criteria will create one document. So in, she gets multiple emails per day, but it only has one document on it. And that's her preference and that's my preference for this. So depending on what you need it for, um, super helpful and super important. How, if you're doing like certificates and you've merged, you know, all the kids that are in the honor society and they're all getting an honor society certificate, I would just do that in single output mode. That way you have one PDF that is, you know, 40 pages long and you can just send it to the printer instead of having to send one to the printer, two to the printer, three to the printer. So it really just depends on what you're using it for. However, for today, multiple output, output mode, we want each row to create its own doc. Um, so multiple output mode, and then we're going to hit next. And you can choose a destination folder, and I really recommend that you do this. Otherwise, your Google Drive is going to be just all jacked up with crazy um, created docs. So I created just a folder to house these. I Honestly, I don't ever go to that folder, but it creates a Google Doc for me and then sends it to our bus garage. So it's got to be somewhere. So I just created a folder to... Um, to house those and I highly recommend that you do that. So that's just my bus garage folder. Um, I, honestly, I don't know what that means. So we're just going to skip it. Sorry, you can look that up and but I, I've never used it. All right, and then set merge conditions. This is also really important. So because my form has two parts, the first part is a teacher or coach makes the request. I don't want that request to go to the bus garage because it hasn't been approved yet. OK, so I had to set some criteria so that it doesn't submit on form submit because I'm, it's not ready to go then. So I had to choose something. So I chose um, when the supervisor approves it, there's just one single question that says, do you approve this? And they either say yes or no. So if that says yes, that's my trigger to send the autocrat to the bus garage. So that's really important. Just make sure that you choose your trigger for when it's ready to go. You don't want it to go too soon. All right. And then um, if you're going to share this via email, you will say yes. So I do that on this particular one. She gets the, um, the email. And then you can share the doc as anyone with the link can edit. Again, I, I told you before, she wants the ability to maybe change something before her bus drivers get it. Um, and sometimes, you know, a ball game will change or they'll cancel. Instead of having two bus requests out there, they may just call and say, hey, we've moved this ball game to this date. And so she just changes the name on there. So I definitely give her edit access. So that's where you do that. However, if you don't want the the end person to have edit access to that, you just change that there. Um, and I allow her to reshare it if she wants to, because once it's to her, it, as far as I'm concerned, it belongs to her. Um, and then down below, this is where you set up the, um, the email that they're going to get. So these always go to the same person. It's not contingent on anything that happens in the form. OK, so I just put in her um, email address and I also CC myself just so I know that it's running correctly. That's just a thing that I do. Um, again, I just want to check and make sure that it's running correctly. And there have been times when she might get a bunch in a, a day. And it's also just a double check for us. She'll say, hey, did did we did I miss one? And I'll look back through my emails and see that I got it. However, if this um, who it's sent to is contingent somehow upon the information in the form. So, for example, um, we do these a lot of times for walkthroughs. If, you know, an administrator is walking through on a teacher and they're taking notes as they're teaching and they want those notes sent as an autocrat, um, this will go to, you know, whoever the supervisor is. So you can type a fixed 
email here, or if you remember this little trick, if there's an email over here, like response email address, if, if I want it to change, depending on the row, I can put response email address in the two box here. And so it will go to whoever needs to get it. Okay, so you can definitely personalize that. And then here is the body of it. And so I have bus request approved for and departure date. So, you know, this is what she's going to get. A new bus request was approved by, and I'm just letting her know that it has gone through approval process. So this will either be like our athletic director or a principal's name here. And then just a little bit of information about it. But then she'll also get a Google Doc attachment with all the information, right? She's going to get this autocrat filled with information. Okay. And then we're going to go. So you just complete your email, however you want it to look. Um, and then run on form trigger. I say yes, um, but you still have that condition before. So I like to run on a form trigger. If you don't want to run on a form trigger, you can run on a time trigger and say that, you know, every day at four o'clock, all these emails go out. Sometimes that would be way too many emails to get all at once and it's really easy to lose one. So I just run on a form trigger. So they go immediately. Um, and then you save. I do want to show you, you would just hit save and, and be ready to go. This is what a completed one looks like. Um, without the merge tags in there. So here you can see um, this is our art class, National um, Art Society. Here's the teacher. Here's where they're going. So instead of all those merge tags that we saw, it's filling it in with the appropriate information. There'll be 15 students, two adults. Yes, the bus driver needs to stay. So that's how it all comes together. And that is the email that was sent to the bus garage. Um, when you get here, if you sometimes you'll get errors for whatever reason, like someone may type in their email address wrong. And so you'll get an error that, you know, so-and-so did not receive this autocrat. If you do that, you can always manually run autocrat. You don't have to wait for a form trigger. However, if you do have an error, it will usually show up over to um, the, the end of your spreadsheet, Autocrat automatically creates, actually, I believe these are Autocrat. Autocrat creates these headers for you. You don't create those. And if you, if, if there's an email that's typed in wrong is usually the mistake that I run into. There'll be a red error that says something like failed to send or could not, you know, merge or something like that. You can always delete something that's delete the error so delete all of the red text and then you can just go back into autocrat and do a manual run on it and it will rerun it like it never tried to run it in the first place so fix the email address delete the error in this column and then rerun it if you don't delete the error in the column autocrat reads that as um, it's already been run so you have to delete the error fix the error and then rerun it so I hope this has been helpful. I love AutoCrat. I use it a lot. I use it a lot in conjunction with Form, um, Form Mule and Form Ranger. I use all three at the same time. In fact, you know, this is Form Mule here. This is AutoCrat here. So I, I don't use them one at a time, either or. I often use combinations of them. So again, I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me and I'm happy to help you at any time. Thank you.